Hey guys, um, we are doing Job chapter 20. So um, let's go ahead and open up in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day, for this time, for your presence and your grace. And we invite you here with us, Lord, and ask that you would take this lesson over. And God, help me to speak your words and say what I'm supposed to say. And I pray that you would remove from me anything that I plan on saying that I'm not supposed to say. Help me to speak your words. Let your anointing fall. Let your presence be here among us. God, open our eyes and our ears and our discernment and understanding. We thank you, Jesus. We love you. Give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So now this is going to be the response of Zophar um, in Job chapter 20, verse 1. Then answered Zophar the Namathite and said, Therefore do my thoughts cause me to answer, and for this I make haste. So he's saying, I've been thinking about stuff and I'm kind of chomping at the bit and I can't hold back anymore. So I'm just going to speak. I have heard the check of my reproach and the spirit of my understanding causes me to answer. So he's just saying that, excuse me, um, you know, Job told them earlier that their words just keep bringing him shame. And so he's saying that he's going to pay attention to what he's saying and then answer. I don't really think he did, but that's okay. Verse four, knowest thou not this of old since man was placed on the earth? Haven't you known ever since people have been here that the triumphing of the wicked is short and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment? Though his excellency mount up to the heavens and his head reach unto the clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, where is he? That's what you want. You want a friend that when you're having hard times, they come and compare you to poop. That's the kind of friend you want. Probably not. Verse 8, he shall fly away as a dream that shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. The eye also which saw him will see him no more. Neither shall his place any more behold him. His children shall seek to please the poor, and his hands shall restore their goods. So I looked this up because I was like, well, don't you want to please the poor? But no, you don't. Not in the Hebrew. So... Um, Zophar is saying that for the wicked, and this is true, that um, when ruin comes to them, that like their own children have to beg and borrow from poor people. And then they can't even pay it back. He has to pay it back for them. His bones are full of the sin of his youth, which shall lie down with him in the dust. And that is true for some people, that if you don't repent, and if you don't change your ways, you will suffer the consequences of your actions to the day you die. And you will take that to your grave and into eternity. Verse 12. Though wickedness be sweet in his mouth, though he hides it under his tongue, though he spare it and forsake it not, but keep it still within his mouth, Yet his meat in his bowels is turned. It is the gall of asps within him. And so let me tell you what this means. So just talking, sweet talking. Some people can talk their way out of anything. They lie, deceive, manipulate, play people. And that, will, may, that may work for a while. But pretty soon it's going to come back on your own head. Is going to bite you in the butt, and you're going to pay the consequences for what you've done. Verse 15 is going to be like a snake in your belly. Might be sweet in your mouth, but it's a snake in your belly. It's going to bite you back. 
Verse 15, he has swallowed down riches and he will vomit them up again. God will cast them out of his belly. He will suck the poison of asps. Those are snakes. The viper's tongue will kill him. Lots of snakes out there in the two-legged form. He shall not see the rivers, the floods, the brooks of honey and butter. That which he worked for, he will have to give back and will not swallow it down. You won't be able to keep any of it. According to his substance shall the restitution be. You're going to have to restore and pay back everything that you have. You're going to lose it all when you live a life of conning people and manipulating and sweet talking and lying and deceiving people. Absolutely true. Zero to do with Job. And it says, um, he shall not rejoice therein. Obviously, you're not going to have any happiness because you can get away with things for a long time. But there's always going to be a day of reckoning. Nobody gets away with everything forever. You can take that to the bank. Verse 19, because he has oppressed and forsaken the poor, because he has violently taken away a house that he did not build, what on earth does this have to do with Job? But anyway, let's keep going. Verse 20, surely he shall not feel quietness in his belly. He's not going to have a calm belly. He's going to be sick, rotten because of, you know, um, it's basically like a metaphor of whatever you eat, however you live. This is the type of stuff that you take in. Then it's going to make it's all going to come back to you on your head and you're going to be sick to your stomach. He shall not save of that which he desired. So you're not going to get the food you want. And the food you do get is going to make you sick. Because whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. Whatever you plant is what's going to grow. And so they're saying that apparently Job is just this secret heathen that has done all these horrible things and brought this on, all this pain and trauma onto himself, which we know is not true. Verse 21, there shall none of his meat be left, therefore shall no one look for his goods. In the fullness of his sufficiency, he will be in straight. So that's narrowness, lacking, wanting. In the prime of his life, when he's got everything that he ever wanted, that's when the reckoning comes. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. When he is about to fill his belly, God will cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating, right in the midst of it. He shall flee from the iron weapon and the bow of steel will strike him through. All this stuff that, you're gonna, that you do is going to come back to you one day. Verse 25, it is drawn and comes out of the body. Yea, the glittering sword comes out of his gall. Terrors are upon him. All darkness shall be hid in his secret places. A fire not blown will consume him. It will go ill with him, whoever is left in his tabernacle, in his house. The heaven will reveal his sin. It's going to find out. All that you do in secret is going to be revealed. And that's true. Just doesn't apply to Job. The earth shall rise up against him. The increase of his house will depart. And his goods will flow away in the day of his wrath. This is the portion of a wicked man from God and the heritage appointed unto him by God. Again, it's just sad because we can see how many times that Job has all but begged them to stop 
and to think about things from his situation, to have compassion and mercy. All he wants is to be heard. And they are so wrapped up in themselves, believing that they are, you know, the creators of wisdom. And that they don't even, you know, have you ever um, done that before? I think we've all had it done to us and been guilty of it in some instances where you're in a conversation with somebody and you're not really listening to them. You're just thinking about what you're going to say next. That's something that we all need to work on. And it seems like this is what all these guys were doing. They weren't, you know, they were just so focused on all this wonderful wisdom they had to give that they weren't even listening to what Job was saying. And so I hope in the end um, for all of us that reading the book of Job and doing this in-depth study would help us to be better listeners and better friends and really understanding where people are and trying to bring them what it is that they need in their time of trouble so that we really can be an instrument of Christ and peace in their time of suffering. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you have a great night. Bye-bye.